We'll be reading Psalm chapter 8, verses 1 through 9. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them, yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. I don't know what you think about uh, the last um, several weeks, but uh, it's been hard with all the sickness and all all of the Snowden feelings, but you look outside. I'm telling you, there's an artist and it is beautiful and it is majestic. You look up in the sky and you see these pinholes and you think, wow, how vast, how amazing. Look at what all is, has been created. You can, you can look around and look closely and look deeply and realize there is truly an amazing creator. Uh, we should ponder and we should marvel and we should be in awe. And then when you look at all of these things, you you take a moment and say, and then there's me. One little speck. And yet, this God, who somehow maintains all of this, focuses and is interested in my life. He is. He truly is. And when we hear the account of creation in Genesis chapters 1 and chapters 2, we see how orderly and methodical God created something each day and he looked at it and he pondered it and he declared it's good. That which I have created is good. And he built one thing upon another and upon another. And then on the sixth day, he said, now that I've set the table, now I will create someone, something distinct from everything else in all creation. I will create a man and a woman and they will be human, and they will be unlike the stars or the squirrels or, or the plants. They will be created with something of me in them. I'm calling it my image, my likeness. And so forever, for all of eternity, there will be a different kind of connection between God the creator and human beings. It's just, it's amazing. When you see the order in which the creation story happens and, and there God takes time and pauses and then at the end of the day that he created um, the husband and wife, he says, this is very good. Now, I want us to think about what does it mean that we are this creation 
that even though God has all of the heavens and all of the wonders of the earth working, that he focuses on your life and my life and how we live and the things we choose and how that connects us to God or disconnects us from the God who truly is focused on and caring about us. Well, there's a wonderful author, two authors, Dr. Paul Brand and Philip Yancey. And Dr. Brand was this leprosy doctor. And Philip Yancey is this Christian journalist. And they combined and, and, um, and wrote a book called Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. And it talks about just the wonder of creation and especially the human creation. And then they wrote a sequel together called In His Image. And in his image, um, they, they looked at this I, idea of the image of God within humans. And they, and they noted that at different historic times, we have different thoughts about or focuses on what does the image of God mean or include? And he, um, it says, the Enlightenment age assures us that the image of God is the ability to reason. Pietists identify it as a spiritual faculty. Victorians claim it as a capacity to make moral judgments. And Renaissance thinkers locate the image of God in artistic creativity. As for our own psychology-dominated age, what else could that image be? We are now advised than our capacity for relationships with other people and with God. The image of God embraces all these things. It sets us apart from animals and, and plants and, and, and stars and everything else that God created. It is really beautiful. I want you to know that you cannot look upon a human being, no matter how they're living, without seeing someone worthy of respect because of the very nature of who they are in relationship with God. I know that we esteem people according to how they act and behave, and I understand that. But if we would only look deeper and see the treasure and the value that when God sees a human being, he sees someone that he cares about. And, and that he wants the best for. Well, I want to share with you one factor of the image of God that is intoxicating to think about. It is as wonderful as it is horrible. It is something that is a freedom that... that that we have probably that, that is very, very, very dangerous. Do you know dynamite can destroy someone or it can break through something and be a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I want you to understand that there's a dynamite that God has given us that we may not have asked for, but we have. And we are responsible for. And that dynamite that reflects the image of God, at least in part, is the freedom to choose. When you were born, you were born with the, dis with, with the ability or the capacity to say yes to God or to say no to God. And 
Whatever you do, however you decide, however you use your volition or your will, will have extreme consequences. Because guess what? You are your story. And the decisions you make and the decisions I make tell my story. Yesterday, I looked out over the backyard. What is there, 15 inches of snow there or something? And there was not one track. But finally, I felt good enough to pick up the Christmas tree and to walk where the snow had been untouched. And I brought the Christmas tree like I do every winter, brought it out into the woods. And every single step left an impression. And I decided, okay, I'm going to plop it down here. And then every step back, as I circled around, was recorded. And if I would have gone this way, it would have had an impact. Or this way, it would have had an impact. And do you know what? We live our lives and we leave something behind. We really do. And we can't not do that. Our lives matter. Our actions have effect. And it is so important that we realize the power that we have. We are not victims. Life is not what happens to us. It is what we do. It is about action. It is about, um, it is about intention. It, it, we really we really must do something and what we do makes a difference. Now, some of us have stepped out and we have left imprints in the wrong direction. As a matter of fact, let me rephrase that. All of us have stepped out and made impressions in the wrong direction at some point or time or another. We have done that. But I want us to realize how vitally important it is that we realize that we have this power to make decisions and it is powerful, and it has effect. I know that a lot of times older people make lousy decisions. And maybe you've made some lousy decisions. Well, tomorrow you can do something different. Today you can do something different. But my concern, my hope, is that anyone who is young, who is in the process of thinking about what will be foundational in their lives, will say this power that is God-given, I'm going to be very intentional about the choices I make. Because... Let me tell you some things about, especially young people, about reality. And that is that sin is not, sin is saying no to God and saying yes to self when, when, when they're in conflict. 
But I want you to know, sin is not an individual act disconnected from other acts. Sin literally comes in groups, in families. I tell you, um, you, you decide to do one thing wrong and you look at it as disconnected from all others and a host of other things come in. I want you to know that you can choose your action. But you cannot choose the consequence of that action. And this is where choice and sovereignty intersect. Because if you will choose yes, you will see God's presence in a very different way than if you choose to say no to God. And I want us to realize this one thing, that those who wait for gratification develop character. And those who insist on pleasure immediately delay character refinement. Here's some of the things that I want to say to our young people. Friends matter. Choose them deliberately. Be careful that the things that impress you about someone is worth emulating. I want you to know that physical expressions of admiration matter. God intends for kisses and hugs to imply a commitment, a care for another person rather than a self-indulging act of lust. The more desperate we are for approval, the more unsafe we are. The teenager who tries to draw attention to him or herself by using social media as a replacement for actual relationship building skills makes you very vulnerable. First time experiences have long lasting habit forming lifestyles. If you never take that first puff on a cigarette, you won't spend years of money and energy and time trying to overcome that bad beginning. Bullying happens. Bullying happens when we feel bad about ourselves and we treat people as if they have lesser value. Remember, not only are you made in God's image, but also another person, regardless of how insecure they feel. Treat others with respect and lift people rather than discourage them. I never used to have to even think about sexting. I didn't even know what that was. But in this day and age, with young people being so um, insecure, they put themselves out there in images for anyone and everyone to look at as if they have no dignity. And I'm telling you, if you feel a desire for doing something like this, pause. Realize that you clicking something in one moment, you can't take that back in another moment. Relationships are established not just based on physical intimacy, but on truly knowing a person. How many people's lives have been set in a different direction because of pregnancies or because of not wanting a pregnancy and dealing with an abortion. You can't destroy life without cheapening your own understanding of sacredness. 
premature marriages happen. Guilt causes us to make decisions we never should make. And then our relationships are built on tipsy foundation. And we sometimes don't know the difference between love and lust. That takes time. Unwanted children born to unprepared parents. Short-lived marriages with strings of divorces and failed relationships. And people make the same mistakes over and over again when they fail to reflect on the reasons for their faulty decisions. Living together without the security of love and commitment of marriage. You know, we can't resist God's laws and have no consequences. Now, I've painted a picture of God's image gone wrong. I know it's negative, I know it's critical, I know it sounds deplorable. The fact of the matter is, every one of us can push the reset button, and we can do it now, and we can do it today. Because the nature of God is that he looks at us and he says, you're created in my image. And with that, you have the ability to make decisions, but you can also make redecisions. Now, this is what's wonderful. This is what is amazing. This is what is. No matter what regrets you and I have, you have them. I have them. Because we have the image of God stamped within us, our tomorrow is not limited by our yesterday. The nature of God is he lifts up, that he gives us a new day, that he gives us, makes us a new creation. And this is the most wonderful thing to ponder. God's image means we can have grace. We can, God can take and retell our story, that we can experience forgiveness. We can discover God's purpose. God releases strength and ability and creativity and our story can be stories of restoration because this most wonderful dynamite that perhaps has destroyed so many things because we've used our volition poorly, it can be the very same tool that causes us to live significantly and make a difference in the world, all we have to do is realize we have the image of God and now we can say yes. I want you to connect with the image of God within you. God, thank you that you give me the ability to choose and then when I've chosen wrongly, I can choose again. And my story can be a story of your love at work within me. Dr. Brand had an unusual experience. He was a teaching doctor in India, and one day he had a group of interns, and it was one of their turns to diagnose this patient. So there were about 10 people plus Dr. Brand and then the intern that was was diagnosing this patient. And in the way that Dr. Brand had taught this person, um, they talked to the patient and they did this and that to try to determine what the nature of the problem was. And as Dr. Brand was watching the intern, all of a sudden, this intern was very intuitive and and he could see his eyebrow moving and all of a sudden, he thought of something that, that led to a line of questioning, knowing that that line of questioning could be very embarrassing for a young Hindu lady. And he knew that only honesty 
would affect the diagnosis. And he began to ever so tenderly, ever so carefully ask about a venereal disease. And Dr. Brand saw something and he paused. It was something familiar. And all of a sudden he realized that expression, that line of questioning, that, that very demeanor, that's, the, that's what my, my teaching doctor, Dr. Robin Pilcher, is, but this intern doesn't know Dr. Pilcher. How in the world did that happen? And all of the interns looked at him and he had a teaching moment with them and said, I saw something in that intern that was exactly like what was in my teaching professor. And they thought for a moment and a few of them chuckled and they said, Dr. Brand, that was your likeness that you saw in him. And he thought about that. And he thought, isn't that something? Dr. Robin Pilcher influenced me to such an extent and now I influenced these students to the same extent and now I see that likeness. I want you to know Yes, we're flawed. But how amazing. Do you know that when you say yes to God, people can recognize God in you? This is amazing. This this is sacred. This is marvelous. I hope that we see that this dynamite is the nature of God being loving. We're broken. Jesus became broken. Only God's love expressed visibly through Jesus can restore God's image in you and me. And that's the work of God. That's what God does. But think how amazing, how Brilliant, how wonderful that the image of God has been tainted, yes, but it is restored because Jesus Christ came to do the restoring. Dynamite, it's powerful. Would you say yes to grace, to God? I invite you to do that. We invite everyone to come and say yes to the restored image of God within you because of the gift of Jesus Christ.